This is Bishop Gregory Brewer's sermon at the dedication of the new sanctuary building at St. Mark's Episcopal Church, Haynes City, Florida, October 13th, 2013. To Father Christopher Brathwaite and his family, to Canon Bennett, to the clergy of the Diocese of Central Florida, to the visiting clergy who are here from other church traditions, to the congregation here at St. Mark's, as well as many visiting family, friends, and sisters and brothers. I want to say to you, it is an honor that we can gather here today, even though we are from many different places, together as the collected body of Christ here at St. Mark's Church to thank God for what God has done in the building of this building. For that, I must tell you, I am profoundly grateful. And I want you to know that it warms, it warms my heart because when we pray the things that we pray, especially at the beginning, it laid out in very clear detail what God's purpose was for this place. We dedicate this place, and may it be a place where your name is praised, where we can ask forgiveness, where we can know your healing power, to hear your word, to be nourished by the body and blood of your Son. Be present here to guide, to judge, to illuminate, and to bless your people. You see, so long as the very things that we pray are, in fact, the manifest purposes of what people see through God's people as we gather in this building, we can walk in the assurance that this will be a place that God blesses, that He places His hand upon, where people know that they can come here and the body of Christ gathered will gather around Him and them who come so that this house will in fact be the very thing that Jesus said His house should be, a house of prayer. And a house of prayer for all people, not just some people, but a house of prayer for all people. So that no matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter where you've come from, no matter who your family is, no matter where your background has been, when you come here and you say, oh, my hunger is to meet God. Not just see people. My hunger here is to meet God. Then God's purposes for this building and for His people gathered here in this building will kick into action at the cry of a hungry heart that calls out to Him. And God in His mercy and in His grace, in His wondrous power, in His compassion, in His tender and steadfast love, as people reach forth their hands, God will reach forth His hand and touch them in ways that only He can in answer to the prayers and the wonder of His people. Because that is, in fact, the purpose for a building such as this. Because it is to that extent that this temporal building and this body of people are become instruments that God uses to be the manifestation, as it says in Revelation, of the new Jerusalem here. Where as we gather together, as we pray, as we stand with one another, people will experience that here in this place, God will be with His people. It will be through these people that God wipes away tears from their eyes. Where even in the midst of death, they know the promise of eternity. So that death does not have the last word, but rather God does in inviting people into His heavenly kingdom. So there, there will be no more crying and pain. God will be here making all things new. But, if a building becomes a monument to personal achievement, then things will change. If this building becomes a place where the only reason people gather together is so that they can kick up collections to keep the building going, then the purpose of this place will change. If as people are welcomed in, they become respecters of persons. So that someone of means is welcomed and is given a very good seat. Because we know that they will contribute to the upkeep of this building. And somebody else who does not have that kind of means is that so you can stand over there. 
then God's purpose for this building will change. You see, there's a warning in these scriptures. And it's the gospel reading where Jesus chases the money changers out of his temple. Remember, this is the very same building where we read the story of Solomon laying down and praying, where the power of God comes down and touches people, where the glory of God is so present and so manifest, the scripture says, that the priests can't even minister. What happened? Did God change his purpose? Oh, no. God did not change his purpose. God's purpose with that building would be a place where people would meet him. And so long as that building had been a place where people would come and meet him, his hand of blessing would rest upon it. But if what begins to happen is that when people come here, they don't meet the God of all compassion and grace, the God who manifests his will in love and in forgiveness and mercy, that joins people together where reconciliation happens, where the blind see and the lame walk, where miracles occur, where people are restored in whole new ways, in ways that only God can do. If those things happen, the blessing remains. But if they meet someone else, a respecter of persons, a person who says, I like you, but I don't want you to be here because you should not be a part of us. A respecter of persons that says, we like you because you might be able to give us more financially than somebody else. Then at that point, I'm not sure they're meeting the true God anymore, are you? You and I have been in plenty of buildings, at least I have, that started well. But then in the end, and how many years? Sometimes it doesn't take long, a generation. And the building might still be lovely, but it's beginning to decay. Instead of a place being filled with joy, you have a few loyalists who continue to hang on, but for a very long time, everything is in decline. God has taken away his hand of blessing. May that never be said of this church. May that never be said of this people. May that never be said of those who gather here today and who by the very declaration of their own words has said, we want to be a part of God's purposes. We want to be a place where forgiveness and mercy and healing, where power, where a body learns to love each other, is in fact manifested, where in fact what occurs is that when people come in, he, that someone will look around and say, how you love each other. Because Jesus said, it is by this shall all people know that you are my disciples. Not just by the fact that you build a building. So there is both the promise of blessing if we persevere in God's purposes. And also there is the warning of what could happen if we choose not to be faithful to God's purposes. So there is a warning as well as a blessing. Because you see, there are two buildings. There's the temple that had fallen under judgment. And then there's the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. May this house of prayer always have the characteristics of the new Jerusalem. And not like the temple that's under judgment. If that is in fact the case, and I have full confidence in Father Christopher Brathwaite, that he will lead well this people. That as this place continues to grow and know the blessing of God upon it, what will be manifested is that kind of love and compassion. We will gather here again and again and again, giving thanks for the wonder and the miracles of what it is that God is doing. But for that to happen, we're not here merely to dedicate a building. We're here to dedicate the temple of our own hearts. To say, God, even as there is a new building, work in us a new heart. Even as this building is under construction, thank you that we are under construction and you are not through with us yet. There used to be a button that people would wear and it said, please be patient. God is not finished with me yet. That's what we say, you see. Because 
If we are under the authority of God, we are always being changed. We don't just merely look back to how God moved in the past. We are conscious of the fact that He is moving in our lives now, continuing to transform us so that even though we continue to live with weaknesses, even though we need to beg people to forgive us and to be patient with us, we still come to Him and say, Oh Lord, I thank You that You have not given up on us. Continue to change us and have Your way. And so it is in that spirit that we not only say thank You for this building, but Lord, change this building too. That as we gather here to worship, as we extend our hands, God might extend His hand. As we speak words of love and mercy, God might speak His words of love and mercy. So that in a place that we are so grateful for, this house will be filled with His love and His power. So that this would always be known as a house of prayer for all. In that light, let us pray together. Gracious Lord, we thank you for giving this family of people the resources to build this building. We take it as a sign from you that you desire that the ministry of St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Haines City continue to expand and to include more and more people. Thank you for their foresight and their vision and their willingness to take risks in faith to see you move and to operate here in and through this body of people in this city. And so as we gather here in this building, we say to you, O oh Lord, we thank you for what you have done in providing for this building. Continue to provide also in our hearts that we might be your instruments of love, forgiveness, grace, and mercy. So that this house would be known in this community among city officials and neighborhoods and shopkeepers, city council members, police and firefighters. This would be known as a place of prayer. This would be known as a place that honors you as God in the flesh in your son Jesus, crucified and resurrection. And that this would be a place that would be known where prayer is answered, where lives are changed, where homes are blessed and people are made new. May that always be true here, O oh Lord. For we consecrate and dedicate not only this building, but ourselves. And say, be glorified in all that we say and do. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.